Hi, I'm John Pettuccino, Professor of Astronomy at College of the Redwoods. This YouTube series will cover material that we cover in our Introduction to Astronomy class, from a meteorite found in Antarctica from the planet Mars and the search for life, all the way through to supernovas and black holes. So let's talk a little bit about the phases of the moon. It turns out that it takes the moon from full moon to full moon, or new moon to new moon, about 29 and a half days to go through its cycle of phases. The question is, why? Why do we see what we see? Simple answer, the moon is always half lit. The moon is being lit not by the earth, but by the sun. But the moon orbits the earth. To use the term we used earlier, it revolves around the earth. Turns out, the moon also rotates on its axis. Turns out that its period of rotation and revolution are exactly the same, allowing us to see the same face of the moon whenever we, excuse me, the same face of the moon whenever we look at the moon itself. The moon's rotation and revolution are the same. But that's not what causes the phases of the moon. The phases of the moon are created by how much of the lit surface of the moon we see from our perspective on Earth. So I've drawn here an Earth a moon orbiting the Earth, revolving around the Earth, and the Sun. And I'm going to light the half of the moon that's facing the Sun. So using the red pen, that's the lit portion of the moon. So if we're standing right here on the Earth, here we are, and we look up, we see the moon fully dark. No portion of the side that's facing us is illuminated at all. That is known as new moon. Now, interestingly enough, what can happen during a new moon? The moon, if it's directly aligned, and this happens about twice a year, can actually pass right into in front of the sun, and it will cre create a situation where the sun's light is blocked. We know that as a solar eclipse. So a solar eclipse happens about twice a year for a few folks on Earth who sit in that shadow, and it'll happen during new moon, and only new moon. Let's flip around to the other side. If we're standing on the Earth here at night, and we go outside and look up, the side that's facing us is fully illuminated. That is, of course, full moon. Now, since we just discussed solar eclipses, which happen at new moon, let's mention that lunar eclipses can happen during full moon. Again, the light that was supposed to hit the moon could be blocked by the planet Earth itself. This, too, happens about twice a year. So there are an average of two lunar eclipses per year. One of the questions we discussed in lecture was, which is more likely to be seen? Well, you might say, well, they're both happening twice a year. It should be about the same. But remember, only folks who are in that tiny little bit of shadow can see a solar eclipse. Everybody who can see a full moon, which is about half the Earth, can see a lunar eclipse. So it's much more likely that you have seen a lunar eclipse than a solar eclipse. That is full moon. If we look up in this orientation, let's say here we are, stuck to the Earth somehow, and we look up and we see this portion of the moon illuminated. We're going to call that first quarter, because we're literally seeing about one quarter of the moon illuminated. Okay, one half of the full moon that we could normally see. So this is first quarter moon, that's full moon. So as we move out each night, imagine going out each evening. The first night we go out, the sun is setting and the moon is right in that same orientation. It's possible we could have a solar eclipse, but the moon is new. And then over the course of the next few nights, the moon moves further and further away from the sun becoming more and more illuminated until that face that's facing us is half lit. We call that first quarter. The next evening we go out and the moon is further and further along from the sun. That is called a gibbous moon. So right after a new moon, we have what's called a crescent moon. The moon is small but getting larger, and as it continues to get larger, it will be called a gibbous moon until we arrive at the night. When we go outside at night, the sun is setting in the west, and the moon is rising in the east. That is a full moon. All of these phases, from crescent to first quarter to gibbous moon, have a name. They are called the 
waxing phases of the moon. The moon is waxing, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous. They're moving towards more and more illumination. And what happens the night after a full moon? You guessed it, the illumination starts to decrease. This too is called a gibbous moon, but no longer a waxing gibbous, but a waning gibbous. So these last phases here are called the waning phases of the moon. So after full moon comes waning gibbous. Then third, or last quarter. And then lastly, waning crescent. And then on back to new moon. So that cycle of phases caused by the half of the moon that's always illuminated, showing some portion of that to us, creates the cycle of phases. Waxing to waning and on back again. 29 and a half days, having all sorts of effects on the surface of the Earth.